Welcome back, this is Math for Game Developers, and uh, we're going back today to the problem we originally started out with when we started talking about integration, where we have a velocity field here. And uh, at each point, and for each moment of time, this field specifies the velocity of a particle. All right. I'm only drawing some of the velocities in, in like this grid, but um, it's the velocity should be specified for every point in this grid, for every for every moment in time. And we have a little particle here, which is restating the problem from a previous video. A little particle here that is mathless and instantly assumes the velocity of whatever uh, is the result of the grid. And so right here, the velocity is going to go about that way. And then, uh, then we have a new position for the particle, and then we keep stepping forward in time, and we, our goal is to find like the eventual path of the particle through this grid. So that's the statement of the problem. And last time, we used a method called Euler's method to solve this. We said the next position in time is going to be equal to this position plus h, which is our time step times a function evaluation. We're gonna evaluate this, this entire velocity grid as f. We're gonna evaluate it at this time in this location. All right, and that got us some decent results. We got a solution. It walked us through our, our little particle, our little uh, velocity grid. We got a path for our particle. Um, but we wanna see if we can do a little bit better. And so we're gonna, today we're gonna develop another method of doing this and try and get a more precise result that we can use to uh, to do fewer calculations. So let's say that this is the um, the path of the particle through the field, and the particle is currently sitting at the let's say this point. All right, we've already calculated all this stuff, and we want to calculate the future stuff. So we let's see we're going to do this field evaluation right here and discover the velocity and here is our velocity this is our velocity or also known as the field evaluation all right and then we'll, we'll move actually let's just say this is the velocity times h so we've already multiplied it times the time step here so it's a really small vector and we're going to move this particle forward in time. This is what this is the picture of what Euler looks like. But you can see that if we do this, we're always kind of lagging behind the curve. This is the this is the problem that we've encountered before. We're we're behind the curve. And then the next time we do this, we're going to do it again. It's going to look like this. And now we're even farther behind the curve. And so we want to try and get some idea of um of how we can kind of predict where the curve is going to go. So that we can, uh, so that we can anticipate it, and maybe we can cut it off. Like maybe we we see that the curve is is coming over this way, so maybe we can cut it off and go straight across here, and by and by doing that, be a little bit more accurate. So there's um, so let's let's see. There's a strategy for doing this. Instead of going the entire length of this velocity curve, we're just going to go halfway. And we see that when we go halfway, we can we can do another field evaluation, okay? And we see that the velocity is actually headed this way, right? So at this point, so this is xn right here, okay? At this point right here, uh, and let me see, let me, this point right here is going to be xn plus half, one half, of hvn, which is this vector. We're going halfway along the vector to the next point. And then at that point, we are going to do another field evaluation. So this right here is a velocity vector after we have evaluated the field again. So we're going to evaluate the field at this point, at this point right here. And this is, this is the point. And then we should also, just to be complete, we should evaluate it not at the current time, but at halfway to the next time. So one half of the time step, halfway to the next time. So this gives us a vector that kind of 
accepts the value of the curve we're going on. You see the curve, it curves over to the right, and then this new vector is much farther to the right than the, than the old vector is. This, this blue vector is farther to the left and it's lagging behind the curve, but this red vector is a, maybe a little bit of the head of, ahead of the curve. If we apply it, I'm just gonna do, 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 move it over here and apply it to the original point. That's the trick. The trick is we're gonna take our, our new curve right here. This is our new curve and we're going to apply it to the original point. And this in fact is our new method, which I've squeezed in here, but hopefully this is our new method right here. Hopefully you can see. And this is called midpoint. Midpoint method. Midpoint method. Um, so called because you go to the midpoint of the Euler and you do, so you go to the midpoint of the Euler. I'll try and let's see. You go to the midpoint of the Euler method and then you do a new function evaluation and then you use that as the new, as the new, uh, um, as the new prediction. And as you can see, it does work a little bit better. It gets us much closer than before to where the actual point should be. So let's hop over to the code real quick and, uh, and see this one at work. All right, welcome to the math portion. Uh, let's get started here. Our setup is the same as before. Here we had um, Euler. And uh, so now we want to calculate. We want to do midpoint instead, which is actually very similar to Euler. So I'm going to uh, just copy this code here right from the midpoint position, except instead of h, I'm going to say h over 2. So this is literally just half of the distance between where we are and where we would be if we were if we had done standard Euler. Okay, now we're at that point, we are going, we're ready to um, write the next position of this particle. And we are going to write it at, a, we are going to sample the velocity field. Okay, using midpoint position at a time halfway between now and our next time step. Uh, and that will give us a certain velocity and we're going to use that velocity to do a regular Euler. So from this point on, um, it should look like a regular Euler. We have Xn plus H times a field sample. And we write that into particles, um, particles at the position K and we're ready to go and we build it. All right, let's flip over here to the debugger. Now these black lines uh, illustrate the field at every position over time. You can see time is changing. And this green right here is the, uh, this green box is the current value that the integrator is. And the yellow line is the actual solution. So I'm gonna restart that again so we can see it from the beginning. Green line is our midpoint evaluation and the yellow line is the actual solution. You can see it is it is following very closely. Red is the Euler solution, but I haven't turned that on, so it's not actually moving. So let's see if I can zoom in real close here to the line, and you can see that they're basically they're the same. Like I can't really tell much of a difference. It starts to become a little different over here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we go way out here. Can we start seeing anything different? Nope. They're they're pretty, they're pretty much the same. Midpoint is a very accurate method. So let's hop back over here and now we'll turn down the time step to go from 1 one hundredth, which is where I had it before, so 0 0.01 um, to just 0 0.1 to 1 tenth. And we'll build that again and see how much less accurate it is at this time step, at this time scale. So now you can actually see you can see the guy moving right there, and you can see that he's not is not perfect. He's uh, he doesn't hit the exact solution. He's still pretty close, but now let's comp let me actually come over here and turn Euler on and build it again. Let's see how much better midpoint does than Euler at this time step. Okay, and we can see that 
see, I don't even have to zoom in. You can see that red does a lot worse than green does. Red is Euler, um, green is midpoint. Midpoint, well, I'll zoom in anyway. You can see midpoint, midpoint gets a good bit closer to the actual solution here. So midpoint is indeed a little bit ac more accurate. And next time, we are going to do the most accurate method, which is what that blue square is going to be. He's going to be Runga Kutta Order 4. We'll see you next time.